The foundation of the starting strength method is a model that's composed of a system of first principles. Those first principles, as you may already know, are derived from basic physics, anatomy, and physiology. There are a couple of additional first principles that you can consider in terms of the model and the application of the model, one being getting strong. So everything that we do and everything that encompasses our method and our approach to strength training revolves around the idea that getting strong is important. Getting as strong as possible, as quickly as possible, is advantageous for all kinds of reasons from uh, basic health to improve performance on the field and improve performance in your daily life. In addition to just the benefits that come with carrying more muscle mass and having denser bones, uh, connective tissue, uh, ligaments and tendons and so on. So in terms of efficiency, there are a couple things to think about. Number one is efficiency in terms of uh, mechanics, so mechanical efficiency. And that's all covered in starting strength and all the various videos we have on how to do the lifts uh, effectively and how to do them in the most efficient way possible using your anatomy to move a weight in the most mechanically advantageous way that your body can move a weight. The second thing is uh, efficiency in terms of learning a movement pattern. That's very important because when you're lifting a heavy barbell, your body will arrange itself around the load in such a way that underlying mechanical problem gets solved by your body regardless of how you attempt to lift the weight. Now what I mean by that is if you are trying to deadlift a really heavy weight and you aren't set up in the most mechanically efficient position possible, the weight will either not move or it will adjust itself so that your body is able to lift the weight. And you see this all the time with people who deadlift with a really, really low butt with their back vertical and the bar one or two inches forward of the midfoot. As they start to pull on the bar, the first thing that happens is the butt rises, the bar rolls back before it actually breaks off of the ground. If you don't believe us, come to the seminar or just watch some videos on the, online and uh, watch them slowly and watch what happens. And that's exactly the deal. You have the same situation in the squat. When you squat, if the weight is heavy enough, your butt, your hips, will drive out of the bottom of the squat. And that happens on every single heavy squat. It happens on heavy front squats. It happens on any movement in which the bar is connected to your body, whether on your back or in front, and you're going from a flexed hip and knee position to an extended hip and knee position, which is a squat. In other words, whether you want to or not, you're gonna hip drive when you squat, provided that the weight is heavy enough, okay? Now that's the important part here. If the weight is heavy enough, your body will arrange itself in the way to lift the weight most efficiently. So the biggest problem that we have when in teaching people how to squat, uh, how to squat correctly, how to squat efficiently, how to squat using the starting strength method, and bringing in all of these fundamental principles into a model that we can teach to somebody on the platform is the reluctance to bend over and to stay bent over on the way up. So there's two aspects to hip drive. The way I look at it is it's composed of two things. Number one is accessing your hips early in the squat. So putting the load on your hips because you have a choice of where that load is gonna go. It's gonna go either to the knees or to the hips. So you're gonna, go to, you're gonna load the hips right away. Number two is staying in the hips. So maintaining access to the hips on the way up because our tendency is gonna to be to get upright as soon as possible. So think about this. You have an ingrained movement pattern that is chest up getting upright. So what we're working against is an ingrained movement pattern that you have to undo once you add a barbell to your back, okay? So that's a tough problem to solve. Everybody has a tendency to get upright too early. So it's something you have to pay attention to. It's something that you have to intentionally work on especially on your heaviest reps. So put yourself at an advantage by learning it early on, by practicing it early on, and by doing it correctly through all of your warmups all the way up to your working weights uh, on, your, on the days of your workout. So let's talk a little bit more about how this works and then how to actually learn hip drive and how you should practice it and warm up your squat. Okay, so think about a couple things here. So I'm gonna use Brie as my example. Uh, turn that way, get on your markers there, Brie. Okay, so when, Brie has a bar on her back. It's sitting right here. And as a result of that, her weight's gonna be shifted just a little bit forward. So she's gonna look something like this. So imagine she's got 315 pounds on her back. She weighs 100 and something, 155, 160, something like that. So um, that's a significant amount of weight relative to her size, okay? And what that means is now the, the bar, for the most part, is 
the position of the bar is where her center of mass is gonna be. Now that's not exactly 100% accurate, but normally her center of mass is somewhere in there, now it's somewhere up higher. Okay, so she is, she's in balance right now. As soon as, just do a half squat. As soon as she bends, right there, good. As soon as she bends her hips and her knees, her hips are seeing moment force and her knees are seeing moment force. So there's leverage, leverage is another term for it. There's leverage between the bar position and the hips and the knees. Okay, now I've got, she's got a moment arm between the bar and her hips that's about that long, and she's got a moment arm between the bar and the knees that's about that long. All right, let's go ahead and stand up. So she has bent her hips and her knees at the same time. She's about halfway down, down, and she's introduced moment arms into the lift. So think about 315 plus breeze body weight, right? Distributed along the segments of her body, her spine, her uh, femurs or her thighs and her calves and her ankles and everything else. All that force is distributed along her segments of her body by this system of levers. So she has the choice about where to put that leverage or where to put the moment. If Brie were to bend over right away, she could load the hips faster. Now remember what I said before, when she comes out of the bottom of the squat, her body with 315 pounds on her back will arrange itself so that her hips drive up first. So her hips will drive. So what we're gonna do is put ourselves into that position on the way down so that you're hitting a consistent position at the bottom of the squat, your knees aren't moving around, there's no extraneous movement at the bottom of the squat, and everything is staying, once again, efficient, and every ounce of force that she puts into the floor through her body into the bar go contributes to the upward movement of the bar. Okay, so what Bree's gonna do now is bend over, or I'm sorry, she's gonna start her squat, but she's gonna intentionally bend over quickly. So she's going to drop her chest and she's gonna reach her butt back to the back wall. But now you can see what's going on. So here's the bar position, here is the moment arm on the hips, and here is the moment arm on the knees. So we've got a difference of this is the moment arm on the knees, this is the moment arm on the hips, all right? And this is exactly the correct position. Go ahead and shove your elbows in between your knees and squat all the way down. There we go. All right, now this is what she's gonna look like at the bottom of the squat. <clears throat> That's what she's gonna look like at the bottom of the squat. And notice that the, the, the knee position is the same as where we just set her up, and her back angle is the same as well. So there's the moment arm on the hips, there's the moment arm on the knees, okay? Go ahead and stand up. So once again, whether you want to or not, if you have a sufficiently heavy load on your back, that's the configuration of your body coming out of the bottom of the squat. Check it if you don't believe me. Watch videos of heavy squats, put it in slow motion, and watch what happens to the hips coming out of the bottom of the squat, all right? So that's what's gonna happen. So our goal, our aim, is to put her into that position at the bottom of the squat, and then on the way up, maintain that back angle on the way up. So the key thing here is the back angle. All right, now, in order to stand up, okay, so that's the way down. Now let's talk about how to stand up. When you stand up, and this is where things get hard, when you stand up, you're gonna drive the hips up out of the bottom. You're gonna keep your eyes about four feet on the floor in a spot, and as you stand up, you're gonna think about two things. You're gonna drive the hips while you keep your chest pointed at the floor. All right, ready? Go slow, do it. Very good, very good. All right, do it one more time. Wait, wait, wait. Remember how to squat down, butt back, chest down, knees out, go. Very good. Okay, do it slow again, drive the hips. Very good, very good. Now, the hips will lead the movement. Now that means that you may look like this. You may let, the, the, the shoulders may trail behind the hips. As long as your hips are not going back, it's perfectly fine, all right? Going back is not the idea. Going back constitutes doing a good morning because your knees have extended but your hips have not extended. Your hips and your knees are gonna extend about, at about the same time, when you're hip driving hard, your knees are gonna be extending a little bit faster, but that's the idea, all right? Your, your, your brain will, will solve the problem of you not falling down most of the time, all right? Just don't fall down and you'll be fine. So do it again. <clears throat> now, she's done it slow a couple times. She's feeling everything. She's feeling driving the hips and she's, feel she's paying attention to keeping the chest pointed at the floor. The next step is to do it faster, all right? So you're gonna try to preserve the movement pattern with a little bit of pressure and give yourself some pressure by adding speed, okay? Don't mess this up now. Drive the hips up, chest pointed at the floor. 
All right, do it again. Chest pointed at the floor, drive up. Good. All right, back down again. Elbows inside the knees. Come up fast, go. Very good, very good. All right, now pay attention to the back angle. Watch the back angle again. Go. Shove the knees out, Bree. Good, drive up. Very good. So what you're looking at is her shoulders. And if her shoulders have not come up, in other words, if her back angle has stayed consistent as long as possible, she's done it right. Okay, so another way to think about this is that you're gonna stay bent over as long as you possibly can until the last minute. So accessing the hips on the way down is bending over right away, all right? So that means butt back to the wall, chest touches the floor, knees get shoved out. Now we don't have the bar on the back yet, but we're doing, we're, we're doing everything that you're gonna be doing when you add the bar without the bar. It makes things a little bit easier and allows you to practice it without having to worry about the bar. If you've done all this correctly, you just add the bar and continue doing exactly what you were doing. Okay, so bending over, getting the back angle set, getting the knee position set, getting down to the bottom of the squat, and then don't forget on the way up, it's keeping the chest down as you drive the hips. That's probably the hardest part about learning to squat correctly. Keeping the chest down as you're driving the hips up because every thing in your central nervous system, in your brain, in your entire body wants you to get upright. You have to fight that urge and you have to stay in the hips. You have to keep driving the hips up to the lockout. If you don't do that, you shift the load to the knees. Sometimes your weight gets forward on your toes, but either way, you are putting yourself in a disadvantaged position because now you're requiring more work out of your knees that they're not suited to handle as much as the hips. And you're also just disrupting the flow of the movement pattern. So keep driving the hips up because that's what's happening out of the bottom anyway. Remember, your back is connected to your thighs, which are connected to your knees, which are connected to your shins, which are connected to the ankles and the floor and all that. So your back angle is not only dependent on you bending over, maintaining the back angle is dependent on the knee position as well. So what your knees are doing is of critical importance to doing this whole thing correctly. On the way down, you have to be controlling your knees. So the hips and the knees move at the same time and they set their position right at the beginning of the squat. It means that your hips have to travel this distance at the same time that your knees travel this distance. By now, you should be able to see the knees getting set right away at the same time, the butt goes way back and the chest drops into the correct back angle. If you can let the hips and the knees bend at the same time, if you can stop your knees before they pass the front of the shoe and you can point your chest at the floor, reach back with your butt, you're doing everything exactly right. You're executing the movement pattern that we call hip drive. On the way up, keeping the chest down while you're driving the hips up, that's the key to the whole thing. You cannot dump the bar speed by lifting your chest because that's exactly what's gonna happen. If you keep your chest down, you keep driving the hips up through the middle all the way up to the top, you're, you'll have a nice, smooth, consistent bar speed all the way up, even at the heaviest weights that you can lift. So the last thing to do now is just add the bar, and provided that you have practiced this correctly, provided that you've executed the movement on the way down correctly, and that you're keeping your chest down on the way up, it should look exactly the same when you add the bar. So just tell yourself, I'm gonna do everything exactly the same way, I just have the, the bar on my back. So Bree's gonna take her grip on the bar, Gonna take her grip on the bar. Go ahead and unrack it. Set up for the squat. And we should see her do exactly the same thing that she did before. So remember, butt goes back, chest to the floor. Now your elbows aren't there, right? So you're gonna shove your knees out and you're gonna bend way over. Nope, down and up. Just down and up now. Very good. Exaggerate the hips on the way up. There you go. Come up a little faster, good. A Little bit more hips, good. Even more this time. Good, do one more and instead of shifting your butt back now, remember your butt shift comes straight up. Drive the butt up hard and fast. That's exactly right, good, and rack it. <clears throat> so even with Bree, who's an experienced uh, lifter, there is going to be the tendency to wanna to start lifting the chest up as soon as you put the bar on your back. So you have to intentionally think about keeping the chest down 
as you're driving the hips up. So it's not just thinking drive the hips up, it's thinking drive the hips up while keeping the chest down. So put simply, hip drive allows you to lift more weights. Lifting more weight allows you to get stronger and lifting more weight today allows you to get stronger efficiently. These are all things that we value as strength coaches and strength trainees for all of the different reasons that strength is important. Executing the movement pattern correctly should be your number one priority. All of the other aspects of learning the squat, the grip, the stance width, the toe angle, eye position, all of these things are designed to facilitate the movement pattern that I just explained to you uh, that we call hip drive. So make sure that that's your focus so that you can see all the benefits of optimizing your strength program earlier without a bunch of intervention from a coach or somebody else.